morning. The former Irish professional boxer Deirdre Nelson. Good morning, Deirdre. How are things? Not too bad, not too bad at all. What about yourselves? Keeping well, flying it. In fact, thanks a million for uh, for joining us this morning. We'll, we'll get it, we'll get to KD very shortly, but I suppose we want to touch on on your own career, a fascinating career you've had. I mean, it, <laughs> you've done a bit of kickboxing, you've done the boxing as well. Indeed. Uh, quite a remarkable story is yours. Yes, um, uh, it, it, it's not how I intended it to be, but it's just the way the circumstances happened. Um, as I say, uh, I started off in, in kickboxing um and done very well in it uh and then i was just trying to get more competition so i thought i'll uh, i'll have a bit of go at boxing um and i had my first ever professional fight in uh, las vegas in 1995 and it just happened to be for a world title <laughs> and i just thought sure why not um and uh it was a first all women's card and it was in the former Aladdin Hotel and uh well unfortunately it didn't it didn't go quite to plan um for several reasons. Uh and then there was a bit of a a, a hiatus for a while and um then when Jane Couch got her professional boxing license uh from the British Boxing Board of Control, she had sort of really paved the way for myself and uh, I decided then to uh, formally apply and got my license and um, basically then I just thought the world's my oyster. Um, I was the first woman to box professionally then in October 2000 in the Ulster Hall um, and thankfully that fight went a lot better than the one in Las Vegas so I, I won that fight and um, then uh, I thought well I was offered a, a contest in uh, down south so um, I thought that that wouldn't be an issue, but what well, didn't quite work out that way. Mm -hmm. What's uh, remarkable, Deirdre, too, about that first fight in Vegas was, as you say, like a world title fight straight away. <laughs> but also you had to contend with the Oklahoma City bombing, right? The night Indeed, before. yes. Indeed, yes. Um, it, it was a... It, well, I can't even put it into words. Whenever you were sitting in your hotel room and you were you were seeing the the news coverage play out, and I just thought, my goodness, uh, I just immediately thought for the people caught up in it. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, obviously everywhere started to go almost in a, a, a lockdown type environment. Um, you could almost feel a lull come over Las Vegas. And to be honest with you, I, I thought probably the the, the whole uh, event was going to be cancelled um, because it was so close to it. Um, and actually on the day of the contest, there was a, a bomb scare in one of the, the shopping centres. And uh, my partner was actually uh, up trying to get something for the event. And uh, he had come down and he had said, look, there, there's police everywhere. Um, so at the time, obviously, in Northern Ireland, there was the troubles and it was like, my goodness, uh, it just kind of just following me everywhere, you know. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a terrible, terrible time. Uh, remarkable as well, uh, Deirdre, in that, like, in, in, even in the intervening years, like the, uh, the work you did, the, the sex discrimination case, for example, against the BUI, uh, yeah. preventing you from fighting south of the border. And then just, I, I, I know you're doing a PhD even at the moment, you know, in women's boxing. And this, yeah. this, this sort of thing is, is clearly something you're, you're so passionate about. But how important has that side of it all been? Because as well as a boxer, you've been a trailblazer and someone who's, who's had to, I guess, carve the way for, for female boxers in this country that came after you. Thank you very much for saying that. I don't actually think of myself in that sort of context, to be honest with you. Um, whenever I was uh, told no, I just thought, right, okay, the, I, can't, I can't be having this. So um, I contacted the Equality Authority, who had just newly been formed. And uh, because, obviously, it was a very unique sort of a case and showcased what the potential of the employment legislation was, they very kindly took on the case for me. Because um, to be honest with you, I wouldn't have been in a position to fund that. Um, because as you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't get any sort of legal aid or anything to be able to pursue a case like that. And um, it was quite daunting. But I was adamant uh, the fact that I had been discriminated against, and I couldn't understand the reasons why. Because as I say, boxing seemed to be moving forward. You had the likes of Christy Martin in the, in the United States. It was very big in Europe. Um, unfortunately, it just, it just wasn't quite there within the UK and Ireland. 
um, and I had the, we went to the industrial tribunal and we were successful. And to be honest with you, I felt very vindicated by that. Um, but unfortunately, as the PhD touches on that, it didn't it didn't change anything for myself. Um, you, you may have have got the the ruling within law, but it can't physically force promoters to put you on an event. And unless you have a brave promoter who's going to undertake to that leap of faith, um, then basically you're, you're left with a judgment that says, yes, you've been discriminated against, but you don't have the opportunity to be able to, to showcase what you're able to do. Has women's boxing progress, progressed in this country? Like, have we got beyond those, I guess, heady days of, of the late 90s, early noughties and, and, and moved on significantly? Or is, this, is there still a long way to go? Well, I would say the difference now with what Katie has done mm -hmm. is, is phenomenal. Um, uh, she is an absolute legend, but not not forgetting the likes of uh, the likes of Deirdre Gagardi, who, who was here as well, who was the first Irish boxer, um, women boxer to win a world title. Um, so, I mean, there, there has been other women before Katie. But I think paramount to that was the introduction of women's boxing into the 2012 Olympics. Um, basically, my argument has always been you, you need to create a grassroots space um, to be able to encourage young people to come into the sport and to be able to give them opportunities to develop their talent. And then at the end of the day, then if they want to take the avenue, as Katie has done, to go down professional boxing, they can do that. In saying that, it's 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 not a, it's not there yet. Um, there is a lot of discussion in the women's game about whether or not we should move from two minute rounds to three minute rounds, uh, whether or not for world title fights they should go up to twelve rounds. So it's on parity. Um, they they seem to think that if they do that, that uh, we will get better pay. I I don't necessarily agree with that. To be honest with you, um, whenever the COVID lockdown was on and Basically, there was a lot of women's fights, especially through matchroom being showcased. Um, it was it was it was great to have that to have that avenue. But the question has to be asked: Was it because simply that women were a cheaper option to put on the card? Um, so that's why then, because obviously you weren't having the audience coming to the to the event, so the promoter was trying to sort of make sure that costs were kept down. Um, certainly, uh, Kitty. Um, she, she never discusses how much she is paid and, and the greatest respect to that. But a lot of the women uh, are just are getting pittance um, fight for world titles to put in the, the same amount of work that, that, that their male compatriots do. I mean, in saying that, for my world title fight in Las Vegas, I was paid $1,500 or $1,500, sorry. Mm. Um, so you can see that, uh, what is that, roughly about a thousand euros. Um, so it wasn't a lot of money. No. What needs to change, Deirdre, for that pittance to be increased to something acceptable? I, I think at the end of the day, the number one is it's always going to be exposure. Um, it, it has to, to show that women are commercial, commercially viable because um, at the end of the day, professional boxing is a commercial entity. Katie has, has demonstrated that. She has sold out the three arena um, on the last time, um, and no doubt the three arena is sold out again today. Um, whenever she fought in Madison Serrano in, in Madison Square Gardens, they sold out Madison Square Gardens. So it's it's about making sure that you are given the opportunity, television coverage, um, you obviously have to get the sponsorship, just like with any other professional sport. But if you think about it with women's tennis, the way it was in, in the 1960s, 1970s, and then you had the certain trailblazers like Billie Jean King and so forth, and, um, and the way they have come now, they've been able to get parity in the likes of the big tournaments, big Grand Slams in, in Wimbledon and um, in the US Open. And they haven't had to compromise that by going to five sets. They're, they're still fighting the three sets because the quality of the play is just as good um, as what as what the male game would be um, in a different way. Um, where the male game tends to be a lot stronger. There's a lot of volleys, a lot of rallies within the women's game. 
and I would say within women's boxing, again, it's it's a different it's a different entity. Um, yes, you could argue that there isn't the same amount of power, but there's a lot of skill shown in two minutes rounds. You have a limited amount of time to be able to showcase what you can do, so that you have to fight at a much faster pace, which suits some fighters, doesn't always suit a lot of fighters. Um, and if you do extend up to three minutes, I don't think that it would change the game dramatically, um, uh, to be honest with you. And with boxing, the way my, my argument is that we should really be looking to cut the duration of, of contests down. I mean, it wasn't so long ago that they were doing 15 rounds um, at three minutes and they cut it down to, to 12 minutes. The argument said they'd done it for safety reasons, but you know it was more commercial to fit in with um, TV schedules. Um, I think we should be looking for uh, less time to hopefully minimise the amount of contact that is actually taking place. Can you talk us through the difficulty of developing your jab as a boxer when you were fighting, when you were dealing with the intensity of that discrimination? Say that again, sorry, Colm. Was it difficult? Was it distracting dealing with the discrimination that you faced when you were fighting okay. in order to develop your prowess as a boxer? Um, yes and no. Um, uh, at the end of the day, you, it is it is in the back of your mind, uh, but you you try to sort of uh, trust in your legal counsel. Um, and I was kept very well up to date by them and uh, as to what was actually happening with that, because at the end of the day, they're there to represent you. Um, you're you're not there to take to take the case essentially. So you you have to trust that if you give them all the information that they're going to be able to construct the case and they did that very well. Um so basically you just have to sort of say, well I'm going to let them do what they do. Um but I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Um I'm not going to try and let it uh, sidetrack what I have to do. And I'm just going to sort of hopefully fingers crossed things things will work out. But it Yes, uh, whenever you do have down times, it, it does tend to it does tend to play on your mind um, because you're sort of saying to yourself, I'm a waste of my time. Uh, I'm a putting in all this, this work for nothing because at that time, obviously, even though you were in professional boxing, you were very loosely termed professional because you essentially weren't getting paid. You know, at the end of the day, for me to, to get licensed, I had to self-fund, I had to self-fund for medicals, um, and all the other associated costs, um, whilst obviously um, holding down a, a full-time job. So, it, it, you know, whenever you, you get your sort of um, down moments, it does, it is, it is difficult, but you do try to stay uh, as positive as you possibly can. Was your love of boxing itself ever affected? Um, yeah. Looking back, probably not at the time. But probably now, yes, because part of me sort of you 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 look at all the the opportunities, and I am I am so fantastically glad for the women that they have the opportunities. But you just sort of you know part of you is is a bit of bittersweet. You sort of think to yourself, goodness, that could have been me. What could I have achieved if I had been given that platform to do that? You know. Instead of talking about Katie Taylor, could have been talking about me, you know, at the end of the day. But that that's that's the way it goes. As my mum says, I was always a generation too early. Um, <laughs> you've had women throughout different sports who have been in my similar position. And we, we really just become a footnote in history. Um, but at the end of the day, you then have to sort of take on the wider impact that what our actions have taken. If you don't have the likes of myself or Jane challenging the system, then basically we, we wouldn't be in the position that we are now. Obviously, at the end of the day, the, the girls have to have the talent to be able to take that forward. We can lay out the platform and the pathway for them, but they have to be able to have the talent to, to develop that and uh, showcase what they can do. You're certainly not a footnote to Katie Taylor. I mean, I know yourself and Deirdre <laughs> Gogarty certainly even name-checked by her in, in different times as, as, as inspirations. Um, the two Deirdre's. <laughs> the two Deirdre's, exactly. Uh, there must be something in the name. Uh, like, for Katie, then, Deirdre, head, heading into the, the fight tomorrow night, like, losing her first professional fight in May, such a blow, a chance for redemption, you know, and, and there's already to Eddie Hearn, of course, bigging up a talk of a trilogy fight, potentially for Croke Park, as, as he would do. But 
How do you see this this fight playing out tomorrow night? It, it certainly is a tough fight for Katie. Uh, it's, you know, as I say, to, to lose your first fight, was it in her 27, 23rd fight? Mm. And to do it at home when she had wanted to have that homecoming for such a long time. Um, it, it, it's, it's a big blow. Um, and it's trying to get out of the, it's trying to put that to his side and say, look, that's happened. What can I learn from that loss and make sure that it doesn't happen again? But Katie's well experienced. She has a fantastic amateur background. She, you know, it's not the first time she has lost, although it be in a professional ring. She has actually lost, you know, before, um, obviously with the Rio Olympics. But she came back, you know, at the end of the day. That's the measure of her as, as a champion and the measure of her in a, in a tremendous belief in herself. So at the end of the day, all she can do is just correct what went wrong. I, I do think even though Katie is used to the grand occasions and has headlined sorry, and has headlined events, I do think it kind of got to her a wee bit. You know, the ring walk, for instance, you know, when you have all that support, um, it's, it's going to tire you out as well because your your adrenaline is 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 flowing, and I think the ring walk. To be honest with you, I can understand why she did it. I think it was too long. I think at the end of the day, you need to get in and you need to remember why why you're there. Once it it, it turns out well, then you can sort of embrace everything about that. Um, I think she needs to get back to her boxing. Um, I think that's what she does exceptionally well. She needs to be in and out. She needs to be on her toes. Um, she she can't let Chantel Cameron get the fight because at the end of the day, Chantel Cameron is going in with a lot of confidence. She's uh, proven that she has the capability to beat Katie on home turf. Um, and at the end of the day, if she, if she does what she did in the first fight and Katie ends up falling back, into what she did in that first fight then to be honest with you it's it's, it's going to be a tough night for her but knowing Kitty, she's got a game plan uh well constructed and she's a warrior and she will definitely put on a great show both of them will put on a great show and will showcase at the end of the day it's like any sport take the fact that they're women it's boxing you know take it out um, I'm not a great fan of saying women's boxing. I think it's fairly obvious we're women when we're in there. Um, at the end of the day, when that's you know when you have the best of the best fighting one another, boxing wins. At the end of the day, the the fans obviously get to see the best, and that's one thing that you're noticing now with the women. The best are fighting the best, where the men are tending to avoid one another, um, uh, where the women will tend to sort of say, yes, okay, well, I'll do that contest regardless of, of how the impact may have because they just they just want to, to fight at the end of the day because they, they're, they're, they're glad to have the opportunity. As I say, it's just making sure that they get properly remunerated for that. Not to tempt fate too much, Deirdre, but if Chantal Cameron's arm gets raised again, will that taint Katie Taylor's legacy? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I think it would be a terrible shame if it did because it's just uh, probably at the end of the day it's Katie's time you know um it's just I hate to say with age because to be honest with you if I was a bit fitter <laughs> I'd love to still try and get back in there myself and I'm a good bit older than what Katie is um no absolutely not you know it'll it'll be it'll be yesterday's news as they say yesterday's chip shop kipper um they may talk about it but I mean when you talk about everything else that she has done and the pathways that she has, has led for for Kelly Harrington, Amy Broadhurst, you know, at the end of the day, and all those, you know, great boxers coming forward, absolutely not. And I think it'd be a terrible shame. And, and, and Ireland wouldn't do that to Katie anyway. You know, at the end of the day, we're very good at defending our own, um, you know, and she's a legend in so many people's eyes, and rightly so. Uh, you can definitely hear the passion that uh, you have still for boxing and uh, for people interested to your fight with Marianne Almagar, the, the first super welterweight world title fight. It is available on YouTube to watch oh, in no, full. Oh, no, please don't watch it. It is available. I've ac I actually I have know, it on I here as you're talking. You have that fight. You have that you fight. Yeah, yeah, because in research we were, we were reading up and uh, there's some quotes that you have quite recently Boxing. so you haven't been able to watch it. <laughs> can you, would you ever watch this back? No. The, the 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 fight in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah. No. No. 
No, I can still vividly for, I can still vividly remember. Um, no, because I'm I'm my own worst critic. And uh, to be honest with you, I would you know it 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 I, I went there. Uh, the the fight didn't go the way it was meant to go, um, and I don't think I gave a great account of myself anyway. But there was more reasons to the why it it, it, it finished the way it did. But no, I, I don't want to inflict <laughs> further injury well, I, on, on on myself. I'll sell it, Deirdre, for the people listening in now. I'm watching here as you're talking, and like you fly out of the traps here. I mean, there's def- <laughs> this is definitely worth watching. <laughs> So maybe we could do a live hopefully, rewatch some of it someday. Um, yeah. Oh, hopefully it doesn't show you my partner throwing the ice cream <laughs> <laughs> and it misses the judge's lap when he stops the fight. Were you happy with the officiating? Because that can be that can be a, a touchy subject sometimes, Deirdre. Was the was the did the referee give a good good good, good account of themselves? No, absolutely not. He got his he got his license suspended after that fight. He did. Uh, yeah. I, 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 to be honest with you. Oh, well, I can remember she backed me up against the ropes and I'm like, oh, okay, there I'm getting, getting kind of a bit sick of running after here. I'll let her work a wee bit away. And she she I covered up and she'd done a couple of punches and the next thing he's in. Oh. Arms are waving and he's taking my gun chill out. Yeah. And I, and I just look at her and go, What are you doing? <laughs> what the fight's over? So and why he says, I don't have to give a reason. Deirdre, you have the face. And, and then I and then all of a sudden these cameras just zoom into your face. Yeah. And it's just a complete utter disbelief and the next thing obviously then my, my partner sort of reacted the way he did and I just thought oh my god I just have to get out of here yeah. um, to be honest with you so you're trying to you know part of you to be honest with you I did feel as if I was going to burst in tears you know with anger as well as disappointment and uh, I, I, I just wanted to get out of there because I just thought this this is a nightmare you know, this is this is not the way I had seen it played in my in my mind, um, and I just thought, goodness, and I just thought, oh well, this is the way it goes, isn't it? This is this is Las Vegas for you, but no, I, I don't think I want to inflict injury on myself by, by watching that, and uh, um, even even where in my workplace people said yes, I've seen that, and I went, oh right, okay, right, <laughs> and it quickly changed the subject. Um, yeah. That's fair. Yeah, well, look, you don't have to spend the weekend watching it, Deirdre. You can watch Katie Taylor instead. We can, you can ignore that and enjoy, enjoy Katie Taylor this weekend. Listen, Deirdre, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Hopefully we'll chat to you again soon. Thanks a million for popping on.